Oh, another cool thing that came out of it, I guess, um, is uh, one of our teams, I think pretty much the entire team, got an internship with one of the host companies. They, they were doing a project very related to one of the host company's uh, tools. And uh, so they, they're reaching out to them with a bunch of free crap, first of all. I think they're going to get a bunch of free technology, but I think they're all going to work there this uh, summer for internships. So that's other cool things that kind of came out of that. So something not to be missed. And uh, I know several of you, and even several of our upperclassmen, when they you know, were thinking about coming to it, were concerned that they weren't going to be able to contribute. So for that, we divide teams up where like, you have a good person, and then you have the suck, and then you have some people in the middle. Okay, so every team is well balanced to have you know some, so everybody got something out of something. Like uh, Pebbles, who's in this class, is an absolute idiot. Um, every one of you sitting here today is smarter than he is. Actually, he's not not he's not not smart. He just sucks at this. Okay, but in any case, he came and had a great time and said he learned a lot. So he's probably like sucks a little bit less than he did before. So. <laughs> You guys know who I'm talking about? Pebbles? He usually sits in the, uh, where is he sitting here? He sits over here as the Macintosh laptop. as kind of the dark hair, little, little bit heavier guy, wears glasses. Yes. His name is Pebbles. Call him Pebbles. Um, yeah, well, there was a whole bunch of uh, fairly funny stuff there. He's Palestinian, so we may or may not have made some borderline terrorist jokes. Um, he plays along pretty well. It was there was a concern during the drive down there that he was going to accidentally take a uh, a unplanned exit towards DC. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, things got a little hit and miss in terms of what we videotaped related to Concordia, but <laughs> I suppose this is on recording now, so whatever. <laughs> Already down the line. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's see. Last time we were talking about lists. Correct? Yeah. All right. So let's, while I still have a job, let's just go down this. Uh, okay. So we were working with empty lists and uh, creating lists. And I think we were going to, uh, right at the end of class, didn't I say something about us, like kind of filling a list with all the numbers that were like evenly divisible by three, something like that, right? Um, okay. So let's go ahead and let's write a function here called fill list. Um, you know, actually, before we even write the function, let's just let's just use a list. That way, we can kind of go back and forth between using functions and just writing stuff. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a variable, and we'll rename this, and we'll call this guy list. And our list is going to start off as the empty list. All right, so this lets us create an empty list. And now what we want to do is we want to go through all the numbers that are uh, between 1 and uh, um, 100, let's say. So that's going to be a loop. So we're going to count because we're going to need to have access to those individual values. So we'll start at 1. We'll go to 100. And we'll step by 1 each time. And then we're going to do something. And what are we going to do? Well, we want to ask a question. If the current number we're looking at, if the current number i is evenly divisible by 3, then, because we're only doing powers of 3 in this example, then let's add it to my list. Okay? Um, and I think we went through and printed these last time. We just didn't add them to lists, correct? Okay. So we need to ask our question. So that's our logic. So again, we're still connecting everything back to this idea of remembering things, Asking questions, repetition, over and over and over again. So we'll ask a question here. If logic, well, it's probably, do we have an evenly divisible? Would it be this one? Does it have a remainder? No. Oh. I know we have the opera. I just wanted to know if we have a, a more convenient way of doing it. I don't remember. This one, maybe? That's the, oh, that's just round up, round down. String, right in here. 
Okay, so we just have to do, do it with normal logic. That's fine. So if, what row? Don't we have modulus somewhere? Yeah, where's remainder? Oh, oh, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. So if the remainder of i, so our current value we're looking at, when divided by 3, in this case, since we're looking for things that are evenly divisible by 3, so if i, when divided by 3, has a remainder equal to 0, that means it's evenly divisible, right? Okay, so if it has a remainder equal to 0, what are we going to do? We are going to add it to our list. Let's see, so we can set... Building list. It's the empty list. Get. Right, it looks like we need to use probably this one. We don't have a way to append something to a list. We just have to create another list with our two items. Seems extraordinarily dumb. Okay, well, we'll go with it. So we will set our list equal to a new list containing our current list followed by the current value of i. And let's see if this actually puts the list together or adds element zero is this list because this could get interesting. Um, actually, it can get really interesting really fast. I hope it actually gets really interesting really fast. That makes this, this thing pretty fun. All right. So have the empty list. Go through all the numbers between 1 and 100, counting by 1. If I mod 3... Well, the remainder of i divided by 3 is equal to 0. The current number we're looking at is evenly divisible by 3. We want to, we're setting our variable list equal to the result. Uh, let me get rid of this guy here. The result of a list followed by our value i. Now, what I expect we're going to get is a list containing two elements. A list and 3. Then the next one would be the list can the would be a list containing three and then uh, another list containing three and um, well I think you'll see easier for me to just show it so I don't think it's going to merge this guy into this list I think this will create a brand new list with two elements where the first element is our old list and the second element is actually our I. When really what we want is a list containing all the things that are really evenly divisible by 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, so on and so forth. So that's actually going to be interesting how we're going to have to pull this off. Okay. So we'll go ahead and uh, this loop goes through 1 to 100. Add stuff to our list in the way that we think might work. Once this is done, let's just go ahead and print out. our list, and I think we're going to see that it's not quite what we had in mind. Has all the right stuff, just kind of built, it's built a little funny. Go ahead and run this. Actually, it's sort of kind of upsetting because it seems like it did build it the way that I, that it's, we intended. <laughs> it's upsetting because we got the correct result. <laughs> 
Well, let's assume we got the incorrect result. Okay, because I actually, uh, what we just saw is we saw kind of a caveat of not really this, but a caveat of how JavaScript works. So if we go and look at the JavaScript equivalent of this, um, this code right here where we're saying list is equal to a new list containing list and I, whenever one of the, the first element is a list, it must produce a new list containing all of these elements and then this guy. So because I'm building a list out of another list, it, it does the merging for me. Or really what I was expecting the res excuse me, what I was expecting the result to look like, uh, incorrectly look like, was something along these lines. So originally list was equal to the empty list, let's say. And then list was equal going to be equal to that. And then list was going to be equal to. that six, and then list was going to be equal to that nine, so on and so forth. So not quite what we had in mind because the way it put lists together, it did the merge, but let's assume it didn't. So we're going to say that this was what we did get, but not quite what we wanted. But ultimately, what we wanted in the end, if we were just dealing with these guys, is we wanted the list 3, 6, 9. Something that looks just like that. Okay? So, because we have a way of building lists out of strings, we can actually build up a string. So, rather than building the list directly, what we can do is we can build up a string and then use that string to build our list. So as we are going through here, we can build the string 3, 6, 9, and then construct a list out of this string with commas as the delimiters. Okay? So in order to get something in our list format, we're going to start off with our string format. So we need to now write the code that builds this string. So we're going to forget about lists for a second, and instead we want to build a string, which is all of the numbers that are evenly divisible by three separated by commas. That's what we want to accomplish. Okay, so we'll go back into our blocks. And instead of this guy being called list, let's call this guy, um, well, we'll just call him S for string. And this guy is going to start off as the empty string. Okay, so nothing's going to be in it. If the current value we're looking at is evenly divisible by 3, we need to add it to s. But there's two different ways we add things to s. For instance, if s is currently equal to that, and we just found a 3, we want s to become equal to this. But if s currently looks equal to that, and we just found a 6, we want s to be equal to whatever it used to be, comma 6. Okay, so sometimes we want to have commas, sometimes we don't. So if the string is currently has a length, if the string currently has a length of nothing, of zero, then we want to just set the string equal to the value we just found. We want to add that on there. If it's a length of something greater than zero, then we want to concatenate on, we want to add to it, comma, then the number. Make sense? All right, so we're going to have to ask an additional question. If we're looking at a number that's evenly divisible by 3 is what that says, then we're going to ask another question. Then if, go into text, we're interested in the length of text. So if the length, oh, I guess we'd, uh, it wants my logic first. If the length of s, which will be a number, if that guy is equivalent to 0, which mainly says, is this the empty string? Do we have an empty string out of curiosity? Oh, we do. It is empty. That might. Yep. 
these two things are the same. <laughs> they mean the same thing. Uh, let's put S in there. All right, so we can look at S's length and ask if its length is zero, or we can just use the is empty um, function here. So we'll say if, we'll use the is empty guy here. If S is empty, there's nothing in there, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set S equal to Uh, we don't even need to set it. We can append it right here. So 2s append text. And what text are we going to append? I think we can just append i. I think it'll let us do that. Yep. Uh, and actually, let me, let me build this a couple ways. So this line right here is the same thing as saying this. Set s equal to create text with s and i. So these two guys are equivalent. This is setting S equal to, this is just appending on to S I, storing the result back in S. This is changing the value of S by saying set S to, so we're going to store the result back in S, and what is S going to hold? It's going to hold text created with these two elements, whatever S used to be, and then I. Okay? So... These two guys functionally equivalent. Doesn't really matter which one you do. In fact, realistically, um, just out of curiosity, let's look. Um, we'll just put them both in there for right now. Let's look at what code it produces for the two of these. Let's look at the JavaScript equivalent of this and this and see if they're different from each other. Same exact line of code. That makes sense? So, um, kind of interesting how uh, uh, Blockly uh, does that. This is actually related. Uh, Blockly gave uh, our team the idea that we used for um, uh, our hackathon project. You know, the how many of you have ever tried to use Blockly on a smartphone? How many of you do your homework from your smartphone in the bathroom? <laughs> You're not maximizing your productivity time <laughs> is the issue. Um, a weakness that I see with Blockly, it's fine for what we do in here in terms of using a desktop browser and blah, 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 well, laptop, whatever. But if you try to use this, this is JavaScript based. So this is just running in a web browser. Convenient for us, but if you try to run this on your, um, even an iPad, but, you know, iPhone, Android phone, whatever, uh, a web browser that supports JavaScript but on a mobile device, it's very difficult to work with. Um, just JavaScript is slow and, you know, kind of touchy on touch interfaces. So you really can't do this as quickly as we can do it with the mouse uh, on here. So what we decided to do is build a, um, an iPhone app with the idea that uh, you know, we didn't use Blockly, but, and we actually didn't use an existing language like JavaScript because a weakness with JavaScript would be you still have to execute it inside of a web browser, right? You still have to run it inside of a web browser to get your, uh, to get your output. So what we did is we created a programming language. Um, we did this all for iPhone, and we used the Swift programming language, and we created an interpreter. So we wrote our own language. So instead of having using JavaScript or Python or Dart as the back end, we decided we wanted to execute on an iPhone. So we wrote our own programming language. And then we had an interface for generating the stuff. So actually, I can, I can show you on here. Just to kind of show you the 24-hour somewhat ghetto equivalent to, <laughs> to Blockly. Um, yeah, so this was our, this was our code base. 
So in 24 hours, we wrote all of this stuff. Um, this, this is our actual language for different operators and stuff. So this is what you guys will be doing next semester. But uh, if I run this, let's just do it on a six emulator. Oh, it's, there we go. Um, so the idea is this is kind of like our toolbox. So if we want to remember something, we'll do create remember, we'll give it a variable name, we'll set the value. Maybe we're going to set this guy to the value five for a literal. So now we have that line of code here. Similarly, we can create a variable maybe called B and let's set it equal to another variable. Maybe we set it equal to A. And then let's go ahead and print out A and print out B. So this is equivalent to the Blockly code. I'll run it real quick. So we hit run. This sends it into our interpreter that we wrote, which then outputs the two values, resolves those variables 5 and 5. Um, so this would be equivalent to the Blockly code of Set A to 5, set B to A, and then print. A, and then print B. So, same same output uh, for ours. So in the end, we should get two fives. There's our 33, and there's our five and our five. So what's kind of interesting is our the what we wrote was actually faster to be able to create, right? And imagine sitting there and doing it all with your thumbs on your phone. So it actually would be even quicker than me tapping it out on, uh, on here. So the idea is we're gonna try to create something kind of equivalent to Blockly for iPhone and then also for Android so you can actually write software visually, uh, completely graphically, and then it runs but not inside of a web browser using JavaScript. Instead, it runs through our own programming language, their own interpreter that we wrote. Um, that converts it. So that's what we did in, in our 24 hours. It was kind of a cool thing. It was Blockly inspired. We wrote Blockly inspired code. All right. Okay. So, in any case, what we want to do here is, if we have the remainder of 3 is equal to 0, if S is empty, we're just going to append onto S uh, that guy. Otherwise, so we'll go ahead and have our else in here. Oh, we've got to drag it through. Else, we're going to append onto S. How would I append onto S? I want to get a comma and then my value I. So in this case, if we had the empty string, we just appended on three. But if we had something that wasn't the empty string, we want to append on a comma, then I. How would I append on a comma and then I? How would I modify this line right here to do both? Comma and a string plus I. Comma and a string. Oh, okay, okay. Um, you're right, but I'm not going to allow that because that actually leverages what you know about JavaScript. 
You are right. That will function because JavaScript treats the plus operator as um, um, it treats the plus operator as concatenation. Um, but you're doing it the blockly way, only in terms of what we're shown here. Uh, what he wanted to do is he just wanted to use the math operator. I'll just go ahead and do it real quick. He wanted to do this. And he wanted to take, uh, actually, I don't think, is it going to let us drop? Oh, it does let us drop that in there. Interesting. I think with that in mind, you maybe could argue that your solution is legitimate. Um, Well, I mean, it's legitimate because it works anyways, but because this math function allowed us to put a string on the left operator. Oh, it, uh, no, actually I'm back to it. it it's, it's not right. <laughs> this will work, but it, it didn't, it didn't let us put a string over here. Uh, Blockly is, is type blind. So it doesn't know that S holds a string. It just knows that we have a variable here called S and S holds something. We happen to know as humans that S holds a string. So it's still trying to do math with these guys. It just so happens that in JavaScript, see it's converting. Um, actually, you know what? It actually is doing this intelligently. So now I'm back to saying that your solution te is, is, is acceptable because it's not really just taking advantage of um, how JavaScript works. Blockly seems to understand that because we're dealing with a string that we're going to be putting a string in on the right-hand side. Whatever this is must be a string, okay, because we're setting it equal to a string. Um, because we're appending text. Therefore, it recognizes that we need to convert all of these parts into strings and then apply the plus operator to those strings. Okay, so technically this works, but using Blockly's higher level functions, higher order functions, like earlier we, we compared the append to guy to the um, much scarier looking uh, create text with and gave it a whole bunch of pieces. You know, so this would be more like this solution in this example. What I want to do is I want to find out the solution that's more like this guy. And having said that, I pretty much just said if this is more like that other solution and our realistic correct solution might be, really might be this. Create text S. Uh, well, actually, we want that and we want a comma. But I suppose this one reads a little bit more like uh, concatenation. So we're going to take S, we're going to append onto it a string that is a comma followed by a in this case, not S, but I. So add on to S, a comma, and then I. If we look at the JavaScript, man, gets it up, spreads it out a little bit better. So if S is the empty string, take S, concatenate on I. So giving us this just the string, uh, string I. Otherwise, take S, concatenate on a comma, then concatenate on I. Okay. So this will go through all the numbers between 1 and 100, checking to see if each number is evenly divisible by 3. If it is, if S is empty, just add on I. Otherwise, it must not be empty. Therefore, we're going to add on a comma, then I. Ultimately, we should have built a comma delimited string of all of the characters, all the numbers between uh, 1 and 100 that are even divisible by 3. That gets us this, comma delimited. 
Then we'll go ahead and turn that into a list. So we're gonna create a variable. Call this guy LST. And this guy is going to be a make list from text. The text is going to be S, delimited by commas. And then we'll ultimately print out list, showing now that we have everything in our list. Okay, now things look very similar in terms of how it prints out because this is how print does, prints a string versus print a list. In this case, when we printed out our, let me actually print this guy, just copy this real quick. So I'll print out S, then we'll build our list and I'll print out list. And let's look at the JavaScript here. So notice that printing always calls this window alert in JavaScript, all right? And the first one we're printing out S, and S was the guy we built up up here, which is a string that has commas between the, every, all the characters. The second one we're printing out whatever LST holds, and LST is actually a list. It just so happens that LST um, has, uh, the way it prints out lists is with commas. What we can do here to kind of prove that is instead of building up our uh, um, our string separated by commas, let's have it separated by smiley faces. All right, well, so we'll build up, it'll be three smiley face, six smiley face, nine smiley face, 12 smiley face, so on and so forth. And then we'll say, go ahead and build a list that has a string delimited by smiley faces. So now when we print the two out, they'll look very different. First one will look like number, smiley face, number, smiley face, number. Second one will just be number, comma, number, comma, number, comma, because that's how lists display. So there's my smiley faces. And then there's my comma delimited thing for my actual list output. Okay, now what we want to do, just our last couple minutes, I'm going to fill up instead of I, I think we have, uh, it's in math, we have random numbers, that's random fraction out here, random integer. So instead of I here, Actually, instead of, let's drag this out, let's get rid of this, let's go here with that. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're creating a string name S, started as the empty string. We're gonna go through 100 times and we're gonna just fill this string up with um, smiley face, to, well here, let's go back to comma delimited just to keep ourselves sane. Comma delimited, random numbers between one and 100. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and print out S, so this should be a comma delimited list of random numbers. We'll build a list out of it, comma delimited list, uh, then it'll print the list, which will look the same. Go ahead and run this so we see we get a whole bunch of random numbers. If I run this again, notice the first three numbers here were 88, 58, 40. Different numbers now. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to write a function for our homework. I'll go ahead and start it out here. Function is going to be called is prime.
Okay, and just for a placeholder here. Just put a print. This should return true if num is prime. And false otherwise. Okay? So then for our homework, I'll give this as a starting point. So you need to write this is prime method. Remember, a prime number is a number that's only divisible by one and itself. Okay? Number is only divisible by one in itself. Uh, I don't care whether or not you treat one as prime or not. There's some math rules to deal with prime numbers. Just give me logic that says, this number is true if it's one divisible by one in itself, false if it's not, okay? Um, so in any case, write this function, and now we already have the code that's going to go through and it's going to fill up this list of all the, with values between one and 100, random integers. Then I want us to go ahead and build, or go through that entire list, printing out um, whether or not, well, let's say, let's build a string. Go through that list build a string, a comma delimited string, of whether each number is prime or not. So if we had the numbers um, 2, 3, 4, let's say we were just generating three random numbers, in fact, here, just so your string isn't huge, we'll set it to 3 to start with. So if it happened to generate 2, 3, 4, go through, and it should say, you sh your output should be true, true, false. Not, or it is a prime, it is a prime, it's not a prime. Make sense? All right, I'll give you this as a starting point. I'll put the XML up. Remember, when you submit it, give me a screenshot of both the uh, Blockly as well as the JavaScript. Don't paste JavaScript. Remember, Angel hates it. All right, I will see everybody on, what's today, Monday? I'll see everybody on Wednesday. Uh, 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 uh.